Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another episode of Candy Reads. Today I'm reviewing Crime of Privilege by Walter Walker. Um, I have to give you a mea copa on this. I grabbed this on um, chapters because it was on sale for like five dollars or something when I was putting an order in one time and I like kind of murder whodunits and it had this cool picture on the front here of like a, a big ranch house uh, out in Martha's Vineyard so I thought well I'll pick it up. So I pull it in bed with me one night shortly after we moved to start it and uh, here's the mea culpa part. You know I'm always talking about positivity and not judging people and I have to say I judged. I looked at the jacket cover and I saw the picture of the author and it just seemed so cheesy. Um, the picture of him was so cheesy that I was like, uh-oh, what am I in for now? And then I saw that he's a trial lawyer from San Francisco and uh, I thought, oh, is he going to try to be, you know, Grisham? But then I started reading and I have to say I really, really enjoyed the book. He does, I've checked, he does have a few other books out. Not sure I enjoyed it to the point that I'd want to search out his other books. Um, but I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the nature of the story. It's one of those books where it starts out, you know, you're, you're in, the, in the present, but it's about a crime that has happened in the past. When I first started reading, I was expecting him to try to be John Grisham. Instead, I felt like he was probably a fan of Dominic Dunn because it sounded, or Dominic Dune, I'm never sure how you pronounce his last name. It sounded um, very much like him. Nelson DeMille, who's an author I really enjoy, did a little endorsement on the front cover, which is also part of what kind of drew me in. He says, absolutely engrossing from beginning to end, a well-told story of crime and punishment, sin and redemption. So while I did feel he was writing sort of in the style of Dominic, like attempting to do this reporting on the rich and famous, it was a really badly disguised depiction of the Kennedys, basically. It was about a rape that had happened in a, uh, at a rich mansion at a party out on, the, out on the vineyard or Cape Cod or whatever back in the day and this lawyer who kind of ended up in that world but wasn't really part of that world witnessed it and years later it's still about fighting back the family. It reminded me of when one of the Kennedy cousins if you recall the early 90s, one of the like distant Kennedy cousins whose name wasn't actually Kennedy but he had the blood, um, was it Patrick or Michael? Anyway, if you remember he stood trial for a rape that had taken place years before and um, there was just all this controversy in the family like gathered behind him. It's the exact same damn story. So it, like it, it was good and it was a page turner but at the same time it wasn't particularly inventive because it basically just took the plot of the Kennedy clan, all of the stories of their sexual assaults and how that interweaves with all the um, incredibly good work they do and how you balance those two things out. Um, and he and this guy ends up being a prosecutor and he's kind of in the middle of dealing with all that. So I guess I would say, you know, again, I don't think it was the most imaginative story told. However, if you were going away on vacation or you're sitting on the beach and you like um, kind of crime type books, it's definitely a good read for that. If you're snuggled up looking to get into something deep and really well written, it's not the book for you. So I'm going to put my thumb right straight across. It's not down. It's not up um, because I can't say I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed the book. Um, but again, it's not going to be up for a Pulitzer Prize anytime soon. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're following me on Goodreads. There'll be a link down below to that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. It's